Well, hello, everybody. It's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you know that God is with you exactly in the place where you are. We're in this series called Seeking God. And seeking God is so fundamental to our human existence and to our life. You are called to seek God, whether for the very first time or whether it be for the millionth time, because we can all go, always go deeper and deeper and deeper with a God who is infinite in every way. Well, we're going to read from John's Gospel, chapter 9, starting at verse 1. And it says, And he, that's Jesus, and Jesus walked along. He saw a blind man from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. Often when someone had some type of physical ailment, in those days, people believed it was because people had transgressed the laws of God. And Jesus turns around and says, it's not for that reason. It's so that God will be glorified through him. Look down to verse six. Now, when he would said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the with saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, no, but it's someone like him. And he kept saying, I'm the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? One of the things we know, and we see this very much today in, at our time in history, is that when people come to faith, really serious faith, it is not uncommon to be able to see and to sense something different about the person. I've met many people who've come to faith and they're just different. And you kind of stop and you go, is that, is that you? And you, you hear parents and, and friends often comment on people who have had some type of conversion experience or connection to God and saying they're different, you know. Well, this man who had been blind from birth and begged, they're all going saying, is that him? Is he the one? And he's saying, yeah, yeah, yeah it's me. And then they say, well, how do you see? And in verse 11, it says, and he answered, the man Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. And then I went and washed and received my sight. And I said to him, well, where is he? He said, I don't know. So they say, how did this happen? He said, well, the man spat on the ground. He put the mud on my eyes, mixed it up, put it on my eyes, then said, go wash. And I was able to see. That was his big testimony story. And it goes on in verse 13. Then they brought to the Pharisees the man, the Pharisees being the religious police. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was, it was Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Now on the Sabbath, you weren't allowed under Jewish law to do any kind of work other than what was mandated in the law. Now it was on Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. And then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. And so the blind man answered. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Can you imagine them going, yeah, okay, give us a real story. That sounds crazy. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, meaning Jesus, for he does not observe the Sabbath, where you're not meant to do anything other than worship God. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. Verse 17. So they said again to the blind man for the third time, people ask, what do you say about him, Jesus? It was your eyes he opened. And he said, he's a prophet. And the Jew Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called his parents, uh, the parents of the man who had received his sight. And they asked him, is this your son? who you say was born blind, how then does he see? His parents answered, we don't know. that We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that is uh, now he sees, nor do we know he, who opened his eyes. Ask him, he's of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, He's of age, ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind 
And they said to him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner, referring to Jesus. He, he, the blind man said, he answered, I do not know whether he's a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. So they say, give glory to God. Tell the truth, they're effectively saying. We know that Jesus is a sinner, they declare. But the blind man says, I do not know whether he's a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. That though I was blind, now I see. Underline those words. See what the blind man who isn't able to explain what's happened, he can't. All he can say is, this is what happened. He bent down, he spat on the ground, he made some mud, he put it on my eyes. He said, go and wash and now I can see. See, for this man, he couldn't argue. All he knew was that he had had an encounter with God. He'd had an encounter with God and that encounter with God, that encounter with God was what convinced him. See, a person with an, an encounter will beat a person with an argument any time. A person with, a, with an encounter will beat a person with an argument any time. And that's what we see in this story. And I want to encourage you that as you seek God, seek the God who wishes to be encountered. Because our encounter defeats doubt. Our encounter defeats that which sometimes we can't explain. Sometimes it's difficult to tell people, why do you believe? Sometimes it's difficult to explain the reason for your faith. Sometimes it's, but, but sometimes you just know, you know, you know, because you have encountered and experienced God. That's certainly true in my life. And so as you seek God, seek the God who desires to be encountered and say, God, come into my life. And as we pray prayers throughout our whole day of God, may I experience you. Would you be with me? Would you bless me? Would you give me strength? Allow the presence of God to be in you and on you right now so that you encounter the presence of God right throughout your day. Loving God, we know that sometimes arguments don't make sense, but we know what we know. No one can take our experience away. Allow us to experience you in our mind, in our heart, in our emotions, in our soul, so that we know, we know, no matter what anyone else says or believes or thinks, we know because of what we are. May we seek you, the God who seeks to be encountered in our everyday life. And Father, I pray that that would be people's prayer on this day whenever they listen to this, that they would, they would listen to this and they would hear it on this day in their life, they would encounter you. Father, we ask this prayer in the name of Jesus through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all, everybody. See you tomorrow. And don't forget, wherever you are, God is never far from you.